First of all, uh, I'd like to introduce Luis Morris um, from Chile. He is a candidate, a diploma candidate at our institute, ISAP in Zurich. And he has been uh, one of the really enthusiasts of fairy tale drama. So he's often gathered the students together from ISAP and made it possible that every semester we have one fairy tale drama that lasts over a weekend. Luis, would you like to say something about yourself? Uh, well, first, I'm just honored to be here, uh, and I'm very happy to to be able to participate, to have been invited, uh, to talk a little bit about about what what uh, we do uh, in the fairy tale weekend. Um, the only thing that I can say just is this: this has been a a foundation stone for my own training here at ISAP. Um, it has been as important as my own personal analysis. Um, just it is highly, highly powerful. I think. Thank you, Luis, and we'll hear more about you later. Okay. So the plan today is I just give a brief review of what I did two weeks ago. Then I will show you the steps of setting up a fairy tale drama, a weekend fairy tale drama. Um, then I will explain the different levels of what we do in the weekend. And finally, we will end up with an actual drama that Luis and myself have a bit rehearsed. We only had a short rehearsal to give you a feel of what, um, what can happen in an actual drama. Um, I have seen over and over again that the human soul thrives on drama. It becomes alive, it becomes awake, it's, uh, it's challenged, it somehow breaks from the routine of everyday life. And that, I think, is one of the uh, powerful um, instruments, the sense of psychodrama as an instrument to awaken the soul to its own drama, its own conflict. Okay, now we go on to sharing. That follows more or less also the classical psychodrama. And what in sharing is that after the enactment, then the group as a whole make a circle and they're asked, each person is asked, they can pass if they want to, about what they have experienced. Now, it's not that they come on and say, well, you did this with your mother and I think I would have done different. No, it's, there's no analysis of the enactment that has to be left free the way it is. It's more to say, out of the eye roll, oh yes, this reminds me a lot of a brutal encounter I had. We think of the tyrannical father with, with a boyfriend I had and I felt so humiliated, so victimized, so helpful. It was exactly the same. This was all the memory. Given. Why do we do this? Because it sort of acts as a kind of solidarity. The, the, the protagonist has in some way exposed themselves in the larger group. So to hear that somebody else is exposing them on a similar theme gives a kind of solidarity. Not only that, it does a second function, and that is it creates a sense of community. I feel that's very important in uh, fairy tale drama, where people somehow are, are, are feeling common themes, common archetypal themes that actually bind them together in some way, makes the group cohesive and makes it very supportive. So that the person is no longer isolated or alone, alone in doing their role, but feels they are now part of the group again, and the group is with them on the same emotional level. So now we come to the last section before we would do an enactment. Um, and that is so that from the sharing, we come now to the reflection. And I've actually just explained it. So we try to sit back, having gone through the actual fairy tale, having done an improvised enactment, having done the sharing, we start to say, well, what happened? What, how could you see? What, what is the meaning of this tale? And we try to see then from what happened in the enactment so that we can see the tale itself 
when you reflect on it, is a model of some kind of individuation process. How to face archetypal forces that are embodied in our parents. Never forget that children see their parents as giants, often an embodiment of gods and goddesses, you could say, superhuman forces of which they're pretty helpless to deal with, especially if there's a conflict. And so when we separate the archetypal roles from the personal, we begin to see what kind of energies is involved in working through the problems with their own personal life. So um, we begin to see the meaning of maybe why the org ogre, the witch, the cruel parent, the helpful old man or the helpful old woman, the friendly animal, what roles they could have is as a redemptive factor as leading to the next step. So they begin to see that their problems are not just personal, but evolve or circle around some kind of universal structure, the archetype.